Ready to get started, Rachel? Absolutely. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. If you're new here, my name is Rose Griffin. I'm a speech language pathologist and a board certified behavior analyst and co-founders of Supervision Academy. I'm Rachel Torrance, and I'm also a board certified behavior analyst, and I'm also a licensed special education teacher and one of the co-founders of Supervision Academy. So we got started on this journey of joint supervision a couple years ago. I was getting a lot of inquiries from people asking if I provided supervision. And, you know, I work in the field clinically about four days a week, and it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to also do supervision. And so when I started getting kind of bombarded with all these calls for supervision, I thought of Rachel, and we've kind of been providing joint supervision for about two years. We've been doing this with um, a handful of different people, and it's been a really great experience. And so we've just kind of decided to formalize everything. Um, and we wanna share all that with you tonight because we know that there's a lot of things that can kind of go awry with supervision. I was lucky and Rachel was very lucky to have really um, amazing supervisors, but we know that that unfortunately is not the case for a lot of people. So, you know, you may have experienced some of these things before you start your supervision, but your supervisor is very busy because oftentimes if you are working somewhere where perhaps they're providing supervision, you might have somebody who has a lot on their plate. And so they're trying to provide supervision, but they're also trying to do work clinically. And it can get really confusing about, you know, the scope of practice and how can that person serve everybody appropriately. So sometimes your supervision sessions can seem thrown together. Maybe they're not organized. Maybe they weren't planned ahead um, on time and things like that. Uh, and sometimes you might feel bad bothering your supervisor to ask questions, or maybe you just feel like you're bothering somebody because you know they are so busy. As people that work in the field, we always have a lot on our plate. And so we kind of saw these things kind of coming up at, um, in the field. And that's kind of one of the reasons that we started Supervision Academy as well. Absolutely. And so once I had started providing supervision, a few people had come to me and I, I was providing supervision successfully locally, uh, mostly from a few people that had already known my clinical work. And I then, added myself as a supervisor to provide them with that experience. And I loved it. And I realized that as a teacher, I was able to teach these concepts as well. And this was a great opportunity for the application. I also found a few people remotely who had either worked already with another supervisor and they weren't feeling like they were getting the intense level of supervision that they wanted or they may have been working in another agency as, per, for instance, I have a few that have worked as behavior technicians while earning, or, you know, while accruing their supervision hours, but they felt like they were not learning how to do the BCBA related tasks. They felt great with regards to the direct work and their concepts and their understanding of the concepts and the foundational piece was fantastic, but they wanted to also learn how to conduct FBAs, how to do the data analysis and all those other tasks. And in those particular agencies, they were not given the, those opportunities. Um, so I realized that the field needed it a little bit different and it's kind of shaped into both my supervision practice as well as combining with Rose two years ago, we both also realized that you know, we both have our own individual areas of expertise and not everybody is an expert at every single part of the task list and every single element of what BCBAs do. So we knew we needed to be able to provide a product that was individualized and that was comprehensive, but also used the supervisor strengths as well as the supervisee's strengths and to work together to give that intense comprehensive experience. So we know that we want, we strive to be a priority for our supervisees and you guys are our priority. We need to make sure that supervisees have all of those skills that they need now, as well as later on. And we know that we can do that because in, within the supervision process, as it's part of becoming board certified, that's the future of behavior analysis. And it only needs to be the best, especially when we're working with some behaviors which are quite intense. 
We also know that the supervision experience needs to be individualized to your specific needs. And we've developed ways in order to assess that and make sure that it is meeting your needs and it's specific to you. Also, because everybody also comes to the supervision experience with their own set of experiences. And if you feel that you've absolutely no a specific concept, then we're not going to focus on that unless you want to focus on it. And then we're going to tailor it to you. We also are very, we've made it a point and we know that um, both, we're very incredibly patient and we're approachable and we're going to make sure that we take time to answer your questions. And that's a big part of what Supervision, Supervision Academy does. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And a lot of the times when I'm presenting live to people, I always say, you know, where are you on your journey? So, you know, we might get to talk in the Q&A here, but if we were chatting um, just live, I always talk to people and I say, where are you on your journey? I am here, Rachel is here, where are you and where do you want to get to be? And that's really how we can help with our different areas of expertise. So tonight we just want to talk to you about who we are. We're going to tell you a little bit about um, us so you kind of feel comfortable with that. We're going to talk a little bit about supervision, kind of our model, what makes us different, what we have put together that we know is really going to make an impact on you applying the science in your field now, uh, like Rachel said, and then, you know, down the road. And um, we want to talk to you and show you how you can schedule your free consultation today because we wanted to do this live webinar so everybody could kind of hear about our innovative model and just so you can kind of get to know us, our thought process, why we developed this company and saw um, a need for it. And I think it's always a really good idea to talk to people and make sure that it's a good fit because this is your journey in your supervision process and we want to make sure that you're feeling really good about that. So that's our agenda. Um, so my little story here, I am immersed in all things um, ABA and using applied behavior analysis to help students increase their communication skills. And um, when I'm not doing all those things, these are my three little kids here that keep me uh, extremely, extremely busy. So, you know, I didn't even know what a speech language pathologist was when I was growing up, but my mom was a teacher and she was teaching a class all about careers. And I remember she gave me a test and it said, you should be a speech therapist. And I thought, well, that sounds really cool. So I went and I shadowed a family friend who was a speech therapist and we did home health and we went to a nursing home, we were at a school and I thought, wow, this is so amazing. Like you can help so many people and it's really fast paced and it looks challenging and I love that. And so that's really what set me on my path. About 16 years ago, I became a speech language pathologist. And I remember in my kind of student teaching experience, we call it when I was in graduate school, I had a really amazing speech therapist that was my mentor and I was working with her and she had a lot of very severe students with autism. And while she wasn't maybe doing ABA, she was very organized in her manner and systematic and all those amazing things. And we just had such a great time working with students together. And it was really challenging, but it was also so rewarding to see students who were not verbalizing starting to communicate. And so that's what set me on my path to becoming a BCBA because I just wanted to be able to help students communicate more effectively. I think oftentimes what happens is there can be students who are so hard to help and it's just hard to know where to start. And so I've really dedicated my entire career um, to being able to do that. So being a speech language pathologist and a board certified behavior analyst, uh, there are only 400 people right now that are certified worldwide. So it's a really cool way to be able to help not only the students that I work with clinically, but within this model now with Supervision Academy is to be able to help others develop that framework. So when you meet students, who have communication delays, everybody that I work with is gonna feel really comfortable knowing exactly how to work with that student and how to work collaboratively with your speech language pathologist, which is also a really important skill because we know that that collaborative piece is so very important for our students with more complex needs. And so along this kind of path, I've started my own little company called ABA Speech, and we are a professional development provider. So we offer speech language pathologists courses that are ASHA certified, which is really important for them in their continuing education. And then I also am a product developer. So those products right there, that's my cheesy holiday photo. Um, I have my Action Builder cards, which is a card set that has 100 flashcards in it for students with any type of language delay. 
And then also a game called Double Up, which is geared towards older students. So those are things that keep me really busy and doing webinars like this. I like to do these types of webinars. So that's a little bit about me. And I'm really passionate about helping all students find their voice, but especially those students who have problem behavior, students who um, are really challenging us how to effectively work with those students and to teach them a way to communicate with the world. I'll never forget working with a student who I sat across from him for, you know, hours on end. He didn't seem like he liked anything. He had absolutely no way to communicate. He was eight years old. And the only way he was communicating was with very intense self-injurious behavior and aggressive behavior as well. And it was such a barrier to his learning. And working with that student collaboratively with the team and working towards getting him a device, picture exchange first, and then a device. And now he... This is many years later, but now he's able to request for his wants and needs. He's gone on vacation with his family. And so just kind of that idea that we're working on communication and using the science for all different types of things, right? To work on socially significant behaviors. We're not only helping that student, that child, that client, but we're also really helping their family as well. And so you're doing such important work and I'm just happy to be a part of that. Hi, so I'm Rachel and I'm a Buckeye, Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> That's where I started my career, really. Um, so I took a, a unique approach to the field of behavior analysis. And in the early 90s, I started at Ohio State University as an undergraduate and was wondering what I wanted to do. And I decided to go towards the special education route. At the time, there was no BCBA. And as part of my special education coursework, Cooper Heron and Heward were my professors. I get the chills when I think about this, like, cause this is so cool. And I think back to like those times where they were not there, they were, obviously they wrote the book, Applied Behavior Analysis, that a lot of people call the white, the white book. And I have their original and their second and have and now waiting for the third one, which is in route via Amazon. I guess it's not coming though until June. <laughs> and so it, ABA was my initial foundation with my university coursework. And it was a special education program where I became a licensed special education teacher and for mild, moderate and moderate intensive. And it was all ABA, but at the time there was no BCBA program, they were developing it. And I wound up getting my undergrad and then my master's degree in special ed, graduated in 1998, a few months after that, the BACB was formed. So I thought about getting my BCBA right after the fact, it just kind of took a couple more years. So um, my initial studies were, were in the early 90s and taught special education for 14 years uh, across a wide variety of different types of settings and different districts and with different types of learners, high functioning, low functioning, everybody in between. Then I was a consultant with a local county board of developmental disabilities. During that time, I provided supports uh, with regards to develop, uh, doing an FBA and developing positive behavior supports, parent training and implementing ABA. At that point, during that eight year period, I became board certified and then started my own agency, which is Accessing Abilities, which I founded initially in 2015 to provide supervision. So I've been providing supervision since then, and it's now morphed into a full-time agency. I'm not with the board of DD anymore. Um, and our agency provides ABA in the home. We do consultations in the schools. We provide direct ABA in the school districts and in the community settings, vocational. And so really like Rose's world and my world together encompass pretty much every element that a BCBA, uh, every type of setting and type of learner and support that a BCBA would do. And um, so, I mean, we've grown our agency, I think I'm up to like 30 staff right now uh, between independent contractors and such. So my areas of expertise include functional behavior assessments, developing positive behavior supports, um, and parent training, staff training, developing intervention plans that are absolutely individualized, and also working collaboratively with the whole team. And I always say my job's done when I'm not needed anymore. And I just had a conversation actually yesterday with a client who 
they wanted a year later, they wanted to touch base, make sure that this particular client's doing really well, which she is. And I said, like, these are the types of situations, like, this is what I want. Like, I, uh, call me, keep me posted. If things come up and you want additional suggestions, I know her, I'm happy to provide the supports, but I'm not needed anymore. And that's good because we did an FBA, positive supports were in there. And all of those behaviors that we want to see more of are now evoked and the reinforcement contingencies are there. And there's generalization and maintenance, both with the learner and with the staff that are developed that I helped with regards to developing that plan. So that those are kind of like a big part of my philosophies and visual supports and, and that comprehensive approach. Um, I also do a lot of conferences and trainings. I'm on the board at a local agency here that provides a national conference. It's a two-day conference every year, Milestones, and we also lead ABA professional groups. I'm an ACE trainer, so I do do some webinars here and there when I have the time to do it mm -hmm. and with regards to implementing positive behavior supports and best practices, evidence-based strategies, my, my FBA, thing, uh, specific methods, and things like that. So I am an ACE trainer with the BACB. And I've recently been an expert witness on a case out east where this is one of the many reasons why I'm doing what I do now with Supervision Academy and Accessing Abilities, where an agency really wasn't doing what they should have done and the client got hurt. And, and I don't want to see more. I, I want to make sure that practitioners, especially BCBAs and BCABAs, have the skills to be able to individualize the program, have fidelity in the, in the planning and make sure that that plan is comprehensive. And so, you know, the learner develops the skills that they need and all of which are socially significant behaviors and also we keep everybody safe. So my passion involves individualizing those supports to effectively teach new behaviors, reinforce what we have, teach new behaviors, reinforce those, and work as a team with other BCBAs, with our um, all of the practitioners, the SLPs, the OTs, the parents, other agencies, and just this little picture symbolizes working as a team. And the other part, the other picture, which I forgot to mention, first and foremost, is I'm also a mommy of two, and I have a dear husband, so. It's good. Busy. You're busy. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you know the path, but we just wanted to share a little bit about the BACB standards with regards to how one gets certified. And there is a fantastic resource with the BACB that you can download, and it's one of those documents. It's the Experience Standards, which is the current standards. They are going to change in 2022. But right now, as part of becoming board certified, there needs to be a specific degree with currently it's within specific fields and a master's level, or you could already have your master's and then you go back and take additional coursework. So there's the degree, there's the coursework from the approved university, and then the supervised experience. Once those have been completed, there's the exam. And with Supervision Academy, we are committed to making sure that that supervised experience is individualized and it's also applied. So a lot of the coursework involves, well, it also depends on where you go and we do know which universities, how each university sets up their coursework and we're gonna tailor that supervision experience accordingly. Some of them are, they're, they're all a little bit different, but for instance, if you attend a university that's more reading the research and lecture and studying it and making sure that you have the competencies, then we're going to focus a lot on the applied piece to make sure that you can then take your knowledge and use it in the field. And to fluency and with multiple exemplars and using ABA methodologies as well. So that's kind of like the route to supervision, or I'm sorry, to becoming board certified. Mm -hmm. And the BACB also has specific mandates. I'm just gonna kind of glance over these. There are requirements with regards to who can provide the supervision, who, what that supervision needs to entail, and what types of experiences you should 
have within that experience, within that supervision experience. There are also activities that are sometimes referred to as restricted or unrestricted, or some people also use the words direct and indirect, but it's really better to use the terms restricted and unrestricted because one can work directly with a client, but that's still considered an unrestricted experience activity category. And that's more with regards to whether it's direct work that a tutor would do or unrestricted is usually falls within the realm of what the BCBA would do. And as part of our onboarding process, we give you examples of what this is. We have antecedent interventions and visual supports that help lay it out in very simple bullet point format so that the supervisee knows exactly what is and what is not considered an appropriate activity and where does it fall, restricted or unrestricted. There are also, oh yeah. And that would definitely be something that can be overwhelming just from kind of being online all the time and seeing people asking a lot of questions about what is restricted and unrestricted. I mean, that's definitely something that we're here to answer those types of questions because just kind of glazing over this and kind of giving everyone a summary um, it, it does sound a little complicated. And so we want to definitely be here on your journey to answer those questions. You know, there may be things that you want to grow um, in your, your application of ABA. Maybe you want to work on staff training or you're going to have opportunities to do those different types of things. Those are all things that we can talk with you about, you know, what does that count as? So when that you get to your documentation and need to put those hours in or those minutes that you understand exactly kind of how that flows with the B. ACD requirements. And we do view that as part of our job to make sure that we're there in support of, in supporting you with understanding what those mandates are and how it all works. Cause that's part of what we do. And yeah, and it, even reading online, it, it is quite confusing. Yes. So there's also specific formats with regards to the unique experience log and how you record that those experience categories and also forms. We also have so there's specific ones that the BACB mandates and we, within the remote supervision experience, we have it all HIPAA compliant and there's a nice system involved with signing them. We also have the forms needed in order for the supervisee to share HIPAA or FERPA, which is protected information about the clients and also video releases. So a lot of that we already have set up for the supervisee. Yes, that's good. Do you want to go over this part about the independent field work? Absolutely. Awesome. For the most, thank you. For the most part within Supervision Academy, most people, I would say 99% so far, have been accruing hours underneath the category called supervised independent field work. And at this point, up until 2022, the supervisee needs to accrue 1,500 clinical hours. And those are not all directly working with the supervisor, though. Five, at minimum, 5% 5 of those 1,500 hours are with us. So for instance, if you were to accrue 1,500 hours within a year or a year and a half, 75 of those hours are working with us, where we are observing you in the field, live or pre-taped, we're meeting with you, we're providing clinical feedback, we're working together on program development, and also in group format. And there are specific minimums, like for instance, within a one month period now, you need to have two contacts with the supervisor and two observations, at least. And so that's already built in. And we will, within Supervision Academy, we start out with, as part of our plan, coming up with a and estimated how often you want to meet and it's tailored so right it's all very individualized and the videos are really nice because that gives you a way to really for us to kind of give feedback or if you have a client that maybe you're having some trouble with or you want to apply something maybe that we've talked about in group or individual it's a really nice way to um, for us to give feedback and for us to have a dialogue about how you're applying the science with your um, clinical cases as well so we definitely are here to help. We um, urge you, if you haven't looked at the website 
It's called supervisionacademy.com and it has a lot of really good information on there. You definitely can use the contact form. We've been getting a lot of inquiries that way. So there is a section um, on supervisionacademy.com that says contact us. You can fill out the contact form and tell us a little bit about what you're looking for and we can um, give you a call. It will be either Rachel or myself that will give you a phone call. Um, and I always really like to hear about everybody, you know, where you're going to school and kind of what your work setting is. And we, we supervise a whole um, host of people from teachers to speech language pathologists and people working in um, a variety of different settings. So we want to know that, you know, within 48 hours of you filling out that contact form that we will definitely give you a call to um, set something up so that we can talk with you and learn more about uh, what you're looking for in, within your supervision. So we do offer, like Rachel mentioned, individual and group supervision. I think that's so important. Sometimes when we, we learn about something in the group, it's nice to also have that individual supervision because it's required, but also because it gives you that one-on-one -on -one time with somebody who is already certified. And you just build a really nice relationship with that supervisor and you can um, get to know, you know what type of clients that person has and and what areas of strength and weakness they have and what they really want to develop in a, as a clinician in themselves. So some of the things that we talk about in group, this is definitely not an exhaustive list, but it's something that kind of gets us started. Um, FBAs, that's uh, Rachel's jam. She likes to talk all about those things, comprehensive and focused. Um, we talk about assessment. So VB map, I, um, I'm going to be presenting at the National Speech Therapy Conference all about the VB map and also at a conference here in Ohio in the fall. So it's definitely something that I love to use for my students. And we wanna make sure you feel really comfortable working with uh, different types of assessments that are really helpful for planning uh, robust intervention. We talk about the AFLs, which is really great for older learners and Essential for Living, which is a really, really great piece um, assessment tool for students who are at a certain uh, language level and who are a little bit older as well. We talk about augmentative communication because there's a lot of students who are limited verbally and sometimes it can be really confusing and overwhelming to know, um, you know, what is the best form of communication for a student if, if you have a speech therapist involved or if you don't, it can be kind of daunting to know, well, you know, we have the device, you know, now what do we do with it? What's the best way to, um, to work on skills with the student? We talk about functional communication training, which is so very important for students who are limited verbally up until students who are fully talking and functional. And um, I was just talking to somebody today about a course that I had put together and they really liked the functional communication training piece of this particular course because I showed how you could work on functional communication training with students who are you know, using a device up until I used to have a student who we had a chart and they just had phrases on there. And if the student wasn't um, going to talk at that particular time that they could use their chart and um, that's still being used today, which I always love to hear that. Uh, that generalization piece is so important. Developing line and bar graphs with Excel, which is just such an important tool for us to, to know how to do, to, to explain information, put it in that visual format is just so huge. Talking about ABA in the classroom, um, you know, some people are working in the capacity of being a teacher, um, as a speech therapist, knowing how to utilize the science in a way that's really going to benefit all of your students to help them with their goals. Um, we talk about work systems and vocational training. I think sometimes that it's really hard to know how to work with older students sometimes. And even if you're, you know, working with younger students currently, that information is really good to know because you never know where you're going to be working um, down the road. So it's a really great time to ask all those questions and to learn all the things that we need to learn um, and try to, uh, to, to help our students. We also talk about systematic instruction for verbal imitation training. And I really love talking about that. I have a student who I met in sixth grade. He lived in another country and we did a VB map for him and worked collaboratively as a team. And he had embedded communication instruction. And now that student is in eighth grade and he requests things and he labels things and he, he verbalizes all the time, so much so that a substitute the other day said, you know, I can't believe so-and-so is talking so much. It's amazing. I mean, I just live for things like that. So that's definitely something that we talk um, a lot about and something that I feel like people are very interested in learning how to systematically work on those things. And then talking about social skill instruction and just talking about, you know, what are some of the different evidence-based curriculums that are out there? How can you work on that? with your learners, modified leisure, kind of finding out what is your caseload and how can we help those students increase their skills. 
Should we look at the groups as a, a menu, a choice menu, really? So you can decide which which ones are are needed for you, or we might. It, there's a couple different formats on how you can pick which group you're going to attend, but we also specifically have geared the groups to not be a rep a repetition of what the coursework is. So this is your chance to see it in action, get those multiple exemplars, practice it, and there might be extension activities, there might be extension articles, there's a, there's that applied element to it. And also you get the benefits of having this additional learning community and learning from each other within the groups, which is really great. And what makes Supervision Academy different is this special onboarding experience so that it makes the whole process easier as, as with regards to antecedent interventions too, we're helping to set you up on your supervision experience to understand exactly what's expected, what you need, what the BACB needs. And it's, it's more of a seamless process. We're very approachable. We have multiple supervisors that work with us. And if it's food needs, we're gonna send you to a, you know, we're gonna have you meet with a specific supervisor to meet those needs of that client too. So we have a host of fantastic practitioners, each of whom have their own level of expertise. And that's something that Supervision Academy has and we're proud of it. And we have this access to these innovative different types of groups. We also provide a lot of different sample documents and multiple exemplars, all of which are HIPAA compliant, so that you can see our work. I just did a really unique assessment on a learner and I was able to share that with my supervisees and discuss it and it was applicable to one of their clients as well. So we give you a lot of materials to expand your learning and to help you with not only your current practice and where you want to go with once you're certified, but also study materials. And we will help you to master that love that content level too. We also offer a private Facebook group where people can post questions, have specific behavior analytic dialogue and that level of support too. Definitely. So we have time to answer some questions. I'm gonna stop my share. If anybody has any questions, we can take them. You can put them into the little um, box and I can open them. You can type it in as a comment, right? Yes. Okay, yes, great. You can type it into the box. If anybody has any questions, let us know. We can stay on for a couple minutes here. I am going to also, um, everybody who registered for the webinar will be sent a replay uh, of the webinars with all that information and um, with our website on there and our email address to contact us if you have any questions but you don't feel like asking them now, that is completely fine too. Okay, so if somebody has a question, so, so the next step would to be request a consult. Yes, so the next step would to be request a consult. So you can do that, Laura, through either the contact form or through our email, which are all at supervisionacademy.com. Um, okay, so Laura asked, how do you get clients to work with? Oh, so, hold on one second. Um, okay, thanks, Rachel. So, with our supervision model, we would not be, we don't have um, clients to provide you to work with. So you would, you know, that would be something that you would be doing on your own. And oftentimes we get asked, you know, I'm working in this environment. Is this appropriate for um, supervision? Could I get my hours this way? And so if you have any questions about what your current work setting is, and if you think that you can get your hours that way, definitely contact us and we can talk you through that process as well. Really and good it question. doesn't have to be a behavior analytic setting, but you can apply ABA within your current setting with permission, obviously, from management. For instance, a lot of teachers, special education teachers, regular education teachers, job coaches, um, if you're already working in the field and it's a socially significant behavior, you can then add the ABA element, which is part of the supervision process. We could talk about it if it's an a, a appropriate program for that specific learner. But a lot of times people that are already working in the field at some capacity can add that ABA piece to it with permission from admin. And we have those forms as well. Right. 
No good. That was a good question. Very good question. Yeah. Any other questions? We'll stay on here for another minute. Oh. You could put them in the chat or the Q&A piece. Okay, so Laura asked, could I, Rachel, you wanna answer this one. Could I independently work with children in their homes doing ABA therapy? That really depends on the state that you live in or the country, Providence, and it's individual specific. For instance, in Ohio, no, it needs to be underneath a board certified behavior analyst. Um, well, actually, technically, we could talk about those specific needs, Laura. Um, it's likely we just need to make sure that it's legal and ethical and appropriate. So we can explore that, absolutely. Good question. Also, if you're already working, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna add one more thing too. If you're already, for instance, if you're working with another supervisor and that doesn't mean that you can't work with us as well. And the BACB does want, and they encourage multiple supervisors, which is part of why Rose and I developed this company too. And with permission and a plan, we are absolutely happy with collaborating or having another agency provide supervision too, and then we can be a supplement or vice versa, because there's a host of benefits to that. And then a different Laura, there's a lot of Laura's on here, asked well, how much do we charge, which is really good and we should have went over there, I apologize for that. So we charge $80 an hour, that is our um, rate for supervision, and um, that's the direct with supervisor to include right. video review, meetings. Great. Right. Yes. So good question. That would be like, for instance, the 75 hours over the course of your 1500 hours. Right. Yes. Yep. Anybody has any questions? Let us know. Chat them and put them in the box. Um, like I said, I will send a replay. I know it's a lot of information. And we will uh, definitely check out the website, fill out the contact form if you have any other questions or maybe more specific to you. And uh, I don't think anybody else has any, oh, maybe one more question. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so Laura said, I am currently working in a clinic. You are saying I could have you supervise me rather than the BCBA I am employed by. Oh, that's a good question. Rachel gets this asked a lot. You want Absolutely. To yes. As long as that BCBA is okay with us providing that clinical supervision. And in that case, it would be, we are the clinical supervisors and the formal BCBA supervisors for the independent fieldwork experience. And we would also, this is very important to bring up too, we would need to be able to observe you in that setting. Some clinic, most clinics, are fine with it and we have not had any, any issues and we do have all of those forms. But every once in a while there is an agency that does not want the videoing and then we need to kind of talk about those options. But as long as they're okay with it, we are, absolutely. Yeah, good question. Very good questions, mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank I you think that's about it. Thanks guys for tuning in and hopefully we will uh, talk with you soon. Bye. Have a good night, guys.